Good evening. Welcome to Everyone Day, especially if this is your first time at Good Shepherd, or if you're just returning after a long absence. We are grateful that you have joined us and the Filipino Apostolate of Diocese of Sacramento to celebrate the 11th annual Diocesan Feast Day of San Lorenzo Luis de Manila. Presiding our special Mass are the Most Reverend Bishop Jaime Soto, from our Diocese of Sacramento, and the Most Reverend Bishop Patrick Buzon from Bacolod, Philippines, to be joined by our own Good Shepherd Catholic Church clergy and deacons. We invite you now to turn to those around you and extend a warm greetings to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Before Mass begins, please remember to silence your devices as a sign of reverence for God and respect to one another. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate God's love for us through the mystery of the Holy Eucharist. 
As an ordinary human being, we get easily worried and anxious when our lives are faced with challenges that create hardships and uncertainties, such as loss of work, health problems, family issues, societal pressure, or loss of a loved one. As Christians, we are reminded that these sufferings are meant to purify us and that we are blessed. So let us remain in peace and trust the Lord. Allow our faith to calm our hearts and assure us that He is bringing us to a place to help us to be holy so we can be with Him after our earthly lives. Please stand now and welcome our celebrants. <coughs> Thumbs up. <coughs> Please stand now and welcome our celebrants.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, it's a joy for us to gather here on this occasion uh, to honor uh, the, the holy memory of San Lorenzo Ruiz. And of all um, holy men and women who uh, have given their lives for the faith, on this day, too, we also fondly remember uh, Father Padre Pio, uh, who uh, today is also, he is remembered on this day as well. Uh, we gather here together um, also to cherish and savor um, our, our, our faith, the faith that we share with San Lorenzo Ruiz, and the faith that has been uh, cultivated and, um, and growing over half a millennium uh, in, the, in the Philippines. And with uh, great gladness, we welcome uh, Bishop uh, Buson, who joins us uh, today, and it's an honor to have you here with us. So let us begin by calling to mind our sins and preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Lord God, the same perseverance shown by your martyrs, Saint San Lorenzo Ruiz and his companions, in serving you and their neighbor. Since those persecuted for the sake of righteousness are blessed in your kingdom, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Pagbasa mula sa aklat ni Sirach. Anak ko, kung nais mong maglingkod sa Panginoon, humanta ka sa mga pagsubok, maging tapat ka at magpakatatag. Huwag kang masisiraan ng loob sa panahon ng kasawian. Manalig ka sa Panginoon at huwag kang lalayo sa Kanya. Kung nais mong tumuywasay habang nabubuhay, Tanggapin ang anumang ipagkaloob niya sa inyo. Tiisin mo ang kadustahan kahit ano ang mangyari. Kung ang ginto ay dinadalisay sa apoy, ang banal ay sinusubok ng Panginoon sa apoy ng pagtitiis. Magtiwala ka at tutulungan ka niya. Maging tapat ka sa kanya at makakaasa ka. Kayong may takot sa Panginoon, maghintay kayo ng kanyang habag. Huwag kayong lalayo sa kanya nang hindi kayo mapahama. Kayong may takot sa Panginoon, magtiwala kayo sa kanya at walang pagsalang tatanggap kayo ng gantimpala. Kayong lahat na may takot sa Panginoon, umasa kayo sa kanya. Pagpapalain niya kayo, pasasaganain, at paliligayahin magpakailanman. Tignan ninyo ang nangyari sa ating mga ninuno. May nagtiwala ba sa Panginoon na nasiphayo? May nananatili bang naglilingkod sa kanya sa kanya na kanyang pinabayaan? May tumawag pa sa kanya na hindi niya dininig? sapagkat maawain at mapagpatawad ang Panginoon. Pinatatawad niya tayo sa ating mga kasalanan, inililigtas sa kagipitan. Kawawa ang may hina ang mga loob at mga tamad. Kawawa ang makasalanang mapagpunwari. Kawawa ang may hina ang loob. Ayaw nilang magtiwala kaya hindi naman sila tatangkalitin. Kawawa kayong mga nawalan ng pag-asa at ayaw ng makibaka. Ano ang gagawin ninyo pag naningil na ang Panginoon? Ang may takot sa Panginoon ay hindi sumusuway sa kanyang mga utos. Ang mga umiibig sa kanyay namumuhay ayon sa kanyang kalooban. Ang mga may takot sa Panginoon ay nagsisikap na siya'y bigyang lingkod at kanyang kautusan ang umiral sa buhay ng mga umiibig sa kanya. Ang mga may takot sa Panginoon ay handang maglingkod sa kanya. Nagpapakababa sila sa kanyang harapan. Sabi nila, ipinagkakatiwala natin ang ating buhay sa Panginoon sa halip na sa mga tao, sapagkat kapantay ng kanyang kamahalan ang kanyang habag. 
ang salita ng Diyos. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. How precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, like newborn infants, long for pure spiritual milk, so that through it you may grow into salvation. For you have tasted 
that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you, as aliens and sojourners, to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against the soul. Maintain good conduct among the Gentiles, so that if they speak of you as evildoers, they may observe your good works and glorify God on the day of visitation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you 
and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Most Reverend Bishop Jaime, my brother priests, Reverend deacons, sisters and brothers in Christ, mga minamahal kong kababayan, magandang hapon sa ating lahat at maligayang kapistahan ni San Lorenzo Ruiz. First of all, I'd like to thank Bishop Jaime for kindly allowing me to join in this beautiful celebration of the Feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz and uh, sharing with you a few words about our beloved saint. He is our first of only two saints, Filipino saints. And it's very, very interesting that both saints are lay people like you. Looks like mas banal ata kayo kaysa sa mga kaparian at saka mga obispo. We hope we'll have a third one and this time a bishop, Bishop Kumamot. Pero nauna kayo kasi mas mababait kayo eh. <laughs> um, actually, it's a great honor to have as our first saint, Saint Lorenzo. But personally, I... I'd like to be frank with you. I was not very enthusiastic about him, about having him as first saint because perhaps because we know very little of his life and when there's little known about one's life, there's so many speculations and generally when we speculate, we are not too kind in our speculations. Uh, what we know is that uh, he left the Philippines because he was accused of some crime and the civil authorities were, were after him. And so he asked to join the group of missionaries to Japan. At nakalusot siya. He didn't know they were going to Japan. He just, he just wanted to get out of the country to save his skin. Only to find out that they were... I, I think he was wanting to go to Formosa. But then he landed up in Japan where the persecution was raging against the Christians. And so again, he had to run away, this time not from, from the civil authorities of the Philippines, but from the persecutors in Japan. And we know he, he was caught and he, under, he underwent uh, horrendous tortures and uh, that's how he died. And so, when I first uh, learned about his life, I was young then. I thought he was, he was, uh, of course, he's a martyr, canonized at that, but I thought he was uh, an accidental martyr. No? Napasubo, at saka, yan, nagipit. But uh, when we read his life, at least the little things that is written about him, I think it's very unfair to to judge that he was uh, an accidental hero or what. He was an intentional martyr, an intentional disciple, and an intentional missionary. Did he commit the crime? We don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But my own reading is that he grew up in the church since he was a boy, he was an altar boy. And then he became a catechist. And then that thing happened. 
And when he asked the Dominican missionaries to take him out of the country with them, he wanted to escape his fate. Remember that he was not just a Filipino, he was a Chinese mestizo. So, walang laban talaga against the authorities, the great uh, prejudice they have of the natives and much more for Chinese. So, he was surely, whether guilty or not, it was sure condemnation awaiting him. And precisely the fact that the missionaries took him in shows us that they trusted him, they valued him, they loved him, and they knew he was a good man. As a matter of fact, they were happy that uh, he could join the missionary group. But then when he was in Japan again, when he was able to escape from, uh, from death back home, here again he was threatened by a worse death, a painful, a very cruel death. And uh, we see that uh, in his life that he wavered. As a matter of fact, he entertained uh, apostas apostasizing his faith, giving up his faith publicly, if only to save himself. And uh, he was counseled, and when he saw the light and received the grace, he said, I will hold on to my faith, and I'm ready to die for it. And he said, if I had to live a thousand lives all over again, I will do the same. I'll give my life for Jesus. Intentional martyrdom. Hence, I find our saint a very real saint. Not a saint of some myths and romanticized biography. A real saint who, who we can relate with resonate with because we too have, have undergone or undergoing what he has undergone. The life of faith is not always easy. And what is important is that despite all the difficulties he had to remain faithful, he held on and by the grace of God he proclaimed his faith in the most heroic, the most brilliant way through martyrdom. Martyrdom means witness, the highest witness we can make, we can give of our faith. A real saint. We too went through times when we doubted our faith, when we felt like giving up our faith, and he experienced that. I'd just, like, I'd just like to share uh, two reflections on uh, the life of San, San Lorenzo. First is, uh, his life really is, I mean, we wouldn't want to live a life like his, very, very painful in the end, but that's the life that is ours. The, the past Sundays, we have been hearing parables of the Lord about the kingdom. And the kingdom is a kingdom of great reversals. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Who wishes to be great must be ready to be slave of all. Last Sunday, what was it? Yeah. The sinners were ahead in the kingdom. This Sunday is again... Dives and Lazarus and uh, the rich man finds himself out of the kingdom and uh, Lazarus there in the bosom of Abraham. Everything is reversed in this kingdom of God. And uh, why? And the gospel that we've just heard 
is precisely the proclamation of the kingdom, which is the kingdom of the great reversal. Blessed are the poor, for they shall possess the kingdom. Those who mourn, for they'll have great consolation and so forth. And uh, that is what St. Lorenzo Ruiz experienced. And precisely in his pains and his difficulties in living up his faith, in his death, he found the kingdom, which is the kingdom of peace, of love, of forgiveness. And what is this kingdom? I have taken for my uh, Episcopal motto precisely the phrase from the Our Father, Adveniat Renum to Thy Kingdom Come. And I, I always explain this, to our, explain this to our people as simply as I could, that the kingdom of God is where God is king where he is obeyed, where his, will, where his will is done. The opposite of the kingdom of God is my kingdom, where my will, my plan is what I follow, where I control. The kingdom of God is just the opposite. And that is why we, we were taught how to pray the Our Father. Thy kingdom come, <coughs> thy will be done. It's the same. Where the will of God is done, is followed, the kingdom of God has dawned. And this was the experience of San Lorenzo. When he finally, after all the hesitation and all the, the discouragement, he surrendered himself completely to God. And he says, yes. Yes, Lord. You have given me this life and I offer it back to you. Then he became totally calm to the point of saying, let me go through this a thousand times more. It's the same answer I give you. And that's how he died. And that is our life. There's so much resistance in our life. We know what to do, but then we hesitate because we have our own plans. We have our own will. We want to be in control. Letting go. Letting God. That is inviting the kingdom. And then all the rest will follow. We sing that before every proclamation of the gospel. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all the rest will be added unto you. The second uh, reflection I had uh, of Saint, uh, on Saint uh, Lorenzo's life is a very happy reflection. Uh, yeah, last year, we had a great celebration. Unfortunately, it was very much the great celebration we planned for last year's 500th anniversary of the coming of Christianity to the Philippines was very much tempered down by the COVID. So the great plans did not, at least the exterior uh, manifestations did not, did not push through. But it's a, it was a great moment for us, 500 years of Christian faith in our country, the greatest gift God has given to us as a people. And, uh, and the theme was gifted to give. We have been gifted with the greatest gift God could give to a people, the gift of the Christian, the Catholic faith. And with this gift comes also the responsibility of sharing. And uh, that is why the theme was very missionary to send as many missionaries as we can. The great, great realization we have is we have already been sending missionaries. Our stereotype or 
uh, yes, stereotype of a missionary for us was has always been a, a priest, a religious. The great, great missionaries we have been sending were and are you, dear Kababayan, the lay people who are all over the all over in every part of the world, living your faith, bringing your faith, and letting, letting your faith shine where you are. And I, the few encounters I have with our Kababayans in, in Europe especially, really move me. They, many of them revitalized communities, churches empty, because the Filipinos were once again filled on Sundays and then movements among families, among migrants became alive. We are so, so proud and happy because of you. Well, we are happy because of you because lalo na ngayon, tumaas yung dollars, no? So, 58 na ata. So, ang ligaya, ligaya na nandun sa amin. But more than that, it's the faith that you have brought to wherever you are. And we really hope that that faith becomes real, as real as San Lorenzo the Ruiz's was. To the point of giving up our kingdom and allowing the kingdom of God to come to us in total surrender. And uh, it's easy to be reminded of this because every day we celebrate the, the Eucharist, our great act of thanksgiving for many things, particularly for our faith. But it's also the offering of this faith and of this life that he has gifted us with in union with Jesus, a total giving up, a total surrender. And in the end, it, it's very intimidating that we lose everything. No. This kingdom is the kingdom of great reversal. Precisely when we give our life to God completely, which after all is His, which after all comes from Him, He returns it to us, multiplied, sanctified, made one with His own. This is the hour the King of Martyrs offered his life in the upper room and laid it down on the cross. Let us thank him and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Uling Penny Balamik in Kekang Santa Iglesia in Dayaning Bayu at Alang Angantipan Ami bubu para kang ipasa, ikapat. Lahat ng nalanan sa mga gantimpala ng buhay. We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Para atay perseverance yami ed, sa tag gracias para yagu. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Kararag tayo amin dagito'y kakabsat, 
karabagyan, ken amin nga minatay tayo. Tapno awatam kuma, idan sa jay na ilangitan, adiso nga insagana ni Apo Jesus, nga agpaay kadakwada. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Kitang nagampo ug nagkahiusa hinaot nga ang Espiritu Santo magpadayon untag hatag kadasig ug ugma kanato. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Tungodhan nga mga Kristiyano nga gintatalumpigos dinhi habugos han kalibutan nga hira sakripisyo din mapakyas lugod na pagsunod han kinabuhi ni Kristo magin lamrag hira nga drohan ginhadian magampo kita han ginoo Lord hear our prayer Para sa gabos na intensyon na iyaon sa satuyang mga puso, asin sa mga nasabi na, taka sa daipan na sasabi, nagurang nan inanyugaan sa mong pamibi. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of the martyr San Lorenzo Ruiz and companions and give us the courage to bear witness to your truth. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, San Lorenzo Ruiz and companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous work by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship on earth and before your majesty Without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rise on to its Christ may be offered to your name. There glory you, by the same Spirit, graciously make hold these gifts, we have, who we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Let's lead to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
give pain admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Called to the supper of the Lamb.
we stand? Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few brief comments. First, we would like to invite anyone uh, who has any images uh, to be blessed at this time. We invite you to the steps of the sanctuary uh, in this uh, mini tradition that we've been doing here at the Feast of San Lorenzo. All those who have images uh, to be blessed, we invite you to come forward at this time, and the bishop uh, will bless uh, those images right here to the steps of the sanctuary. I'm sure there are more. May the merciful Lord enliven and strengthen by his blessing the spirit of devotion and filial love in your hearts so that you may walk blamelessly through this life and happily reach life everlasting. Amen. Una vez más. Una vez más. At this time, I invite Father Michael Vaughn, who has a brief announcement. So when Bishop So says brief, he, he means it. And so uh, it's going to be very brief. I just want to thank uh, Bishop Soto for gracing us with his presence. Bishop Patrick Bazon, thank you so much. Wonderful homily. My brother priests, deacons, all those from different parishes, thank you for celebrating the most sacred, li sacred liturgy with us. I want to thank as well the members of the Diocesan Filipino Apostolate. We pray in a special way for Father Jovito, who can't be here today. Also, uh, for the soul of his father, I uh, recently passed away. Also, the Filipino leadership uh, group of Good Shepherd, I don't think they knew what they were getting themselves into when they stepped to, uh, when they said yes, but uh, I think they aged a little bit through the process, but uh, we thank all their hard work. Yeah. As well, the Good Shepherd staff and office, office staff, uh, day in, day out, Denise Wesleyder, um, Diane Marcotte, especially Monica Goodale. You'll see a lot of her artwork. A round of applause for, for them. And then just, um, this one, I, I know you've probably been hearing this throughout the, through the community, it maybe it's like as, as a rumor, you know, his father, uh, Michael, learning Tagalog. And uh, <laughs> so have, uh, I actually, Father Julius and myself were intensely learning Tagalog. We have our first uh, official mass of the year 2042. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Father Vaughn. And then uh, I was asked to invite uh, Mario uh, from the Filipino Apostolate to so please come forward at this time. Good evening. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat, mayong gabi, kaninyong tanan. Happy Fiesta, San Lorenzo Ruiz. Happy Fiesta. Mabuhay. Happy Fiesta po sa inyong lahat. Ako po ay si Mario. I am the current president of the Filipino Apostolate of the Catholic Diocese of Sacramento. Oh. You know that the leadership has been passed on to me when our beloved president, um, Brother Johnny, passed away. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah. Amen. Alam niyo po, sa tuwing September, for the past 12 years, Brother Johnny and the members of the Filipino Apostolate, with this very image and statue of San Lorenzo Ruiz, they would embark on a pilgrimage or a novena, wherein they would visit 10 different parishes or churches across the diocese. 
dinadala po nila si San Lorenzo Ruiz sa sampung iba't ibang simbahan. This pilgrimage and tradition continues and lives on. This year, dinala na naman po naming muli si San Lorenzo Ruiz sa sampung iba't ibang simbahan. Pumalakpak po kayo pag nabanggit ko ang inyong simbahan o parish para sa gayon ay malalaman natin na may representative mula sa yaong simbahan. For the first day of our pilgrimage, o novena, dinala po namin si San Lorenzo Ruiz to West Sacramento, Our Lady of Grace Parish. And dito pala sila. For the second day, we brought San Lorenzo Ruiz again to San Lorenzo, uh, to Sacramento, this time at St. Paul Parish. May pumalakpak, so nandito sila. The third day was a long drive. We went to Reading at Our Lady of Mercy Parish. May taga Reading ba? But I'm sure that they are with us in spirit. The fourth day, dinala po namin sa San Lorenzo Ruiz, pabalik sa Elk Grove na naman. And we brought him to St. Joseph Parish. The fifth day, we went to Natomas. I'm sure marami ang papalakpak nito. San Lorenzo Ruiz was welcomed at Divine Mercy Parish. Salamat. The sixth day, dinala po namin to San Lorenzo Ruiz sa Folsom at St. John the Baptist Parish. Ayun, may pumalakpak, so may taga Folsom pala. The seventh day, we went to Roseville at St. Rose Parish. May taga St. Rose, o meron. The eighth day po, San Lorenzo Ruiz was at Fairfield at Holy Spirit Parish. Ayun, sabi ko na nga ba, may mga taga Fairfield. For the ninth day and last day of our novena, we brought San Lorenzo Ruiz back to Elk Grove at St. Maria Goretti Parish. Of course, nandito kayo. Salamat. Daming pumalakpak. It was indeed a very wonderful experience to go to these nine parishes and connect with our kababayans. Thank you for the warm welcome and accommodation that we Filipinos are known for all over the world. Today is the 10th day and the fiesta celebration of San Lorenzo Ruiz. I am sure that San Lorenzo Ruiz is as happy as we are to be here at Good Shepherd. So, lakas ng kalakpat. Ikinagagalak po namin sabihin na mula sa siyam na simbahan, Si San Renzo Ruiz ay nandito na sa Good Shepherd. It is indeed our joy and jubilation that our pilgrimage and novena culminates with a Eucharistic celebration. After the Mass, meron pa po tayong procession, then program, wherein the talents from the different parishes will be showcased. Matagal na po sila nagpa-practice. And lastly, this is my favorite, there will be Filipino food prepared by our host parish. Siyempre, para sa atin, a fiesta is not a fiesta pag walang kainan. Di po ba? In behalf of the Filipino apostolate of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Sacramento, most especially from the members who are with me today, they're actually seated here in front. Also, in behalf of Father Juvito Rata and Father Jay Galeon, I would like to thank the Most Reverend Jaime Soto for being with us in this celebration, for celebrating the Mass. I also would like to thank once again Most Reverend Bishop Patrick Buzon from the Diocese of Bacolod, Philippines. Thank you, Bishop Buzon, for that very enlightening homily. We are indeed revitalized. 
Thank you to Father Michael Vaughn, the pastor at Good Shepherd, for hosting this event. Thank you also to the priest, Father Julius, Father Baptista, Father Eric, Father Raj. Hindi po to according to age, ha? <laughs> Disclaimer. Father Ace, Father Ray, Father Sylvester, Father Julito, and Father Paul. Thank you to Deacons Al, Romel, and Deacon Jovi. Thank you to the altar servers, lectors, ashers, Eucharistic ministers, and to the wonderful choir. Salamat po. Of course, thank you to my brother knights, the Knights of Columbus Honor Guards. Thank you so much. Ito, ito yung pinaka-importante na pasasalamatan. Most of all, we would like to thank the organizers at Good Shepherd Parish. You were with us from the very beginning of the planning months ago. We can see that you are still working hard up to this moment. Thank you for your commitment, dedication, and love for San Lorenzo Ruiz. Kayo po ay inspirasyon namin. Palakpan, palakpakan po natin sila. Of course, we would like to thank the devotees of San Lorenzo Ruiz, the Filipino community, and the parishioners of Good Shepherd Parish. Also, I would like to thank the family of Brother John Rigadio, who are with us here tonight. They've been with us throughout our pilgrimage or novena. Lastly, thank you to all of you and to the pilgrims of San Lorenzo Ruiz who came from the different parishes. Nandito po kayo. I firmly believe that God will hear our petitions through the intercession of San, Loru San Lorenzo Ruiz. Uh, amen? amen? Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. I am sure that our Father in Heaven is happy to see us Filipinos gather together tonight in unity to honor San Lorenzo Ruiz. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikiisa to celebrate the fiesta of our very own, our kababayan, the first Filipino saint and the patron saint of the migrants, San Lorenzo Ruiz. Viva San Lorenzo Ruiz! Viva! Viva San Lorenzo Ruiz! Viva! Viva San Lorenzo Ruiz! Viva! Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Mabuhay. As, as the final announcement, Tony will give us instructions in regards to the order of procession. So I invite Tony to uh, give those instructions. evening, my brothers and sisters. Magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. I happen to be elected as the lead procession leader. So this is how it will happen. And therefore, I'll be needing everybody's cooperations. And please be careful because it's already dark outside. The first thing that will happen is as soon as our Deacon Romel announced the end of the Mass and, and before our Excellency Reverend Bishop Soto and Bishop Buson will come down from and do go down to the steps and do the final recessions, I will go ahead and request the following to join me to form a line. I'll be at the fountain and then the color guard will be there. It will be followed by our altar server that carries the cross, followed by our altar server that carries the incense, and then the two altar servers that carry the candles. And immediately after that, we will have six volunteers. Two of them are reserved that will carry our image San Lorenzo Ruiz Carosa. They will all form in the middle. At first, they will be facing me, and as soon as the reverend bishops and everybody else in the congregations step down and face the altar, 
everybody in the formation will then turn around and face the altar. As soon as the bishops already bowed and, and do the last honors, we will go ahead and make a turn around and I will lead them outside. We will be exiting. If you're facing the door, it will be on the right side. It's a very narrow because the middle sections are being used by our video group. So I will going to request the following from everybody. As soon as the BIPs already forming and going out, everybody will then congregate and please form two lines. Now, at the very last portions of the formations will be the elderly and those mothers who need assistance and don't want to join the processions. The reason why is as soon as we exit the church, those elderly that will require assistance will go ahead and proceed to the hall. And somebody will help them seated inside the hall. And as soon as we finish, what will happen is I will direct the first person or the group that will enter the hall will be the Knight of Columbus. And then I will request our altar server to go back to the narthex. And then the volunteers who will carry the image will then proceed to the hall and set up San Lorenzo Ruiz in that se section, while the rest of His Excellency and the priest and the deacon will go back to the narthex so that they can change their clothing. Now what will happen is that it will be dark, so therefore I want you to be careful. If you think you're having a hard time looking at the dark area, you might have to make your own decisions whether you want to join or you want to go ahead and proceed to the hall for our receptions. And this will conclude our processions. The processions will be we're exiting at the two door, glass door on the side. We'll make around the church and then we will come back in front of the church at that side. And then at the end, everybody will then congregate finally inside the hall. Uh, I'm hoping that everybody will be guided accordingly. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.